and welcome back to another episode of She Walks, She Paints. Thank you so much for joining me again and if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing, as always, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm going to be taking you along on a walk somewhere in the beautiful country of Scotland, looking for things to photograph while I'm out and going home to paint something that I find in my studio later on. You can see the full painting process at the end of this video. Today we're quite near to where I used to live, which is Stirling, and we've come to the Dunmore Estate. So it's another old estate which is now open to the public and we can have a walk around. So we're going to have a lovely walk through the woods, we're going to head down to the River Forth, which is the main river in this area of the country, and we're going to end up at an old walled garden, which has a really interesting and unique architectural structure. I'm not going to tell you what it is now, it's one of my favourite random places in Scotland that I just discovered when I was living nearby and if you're ever asked to take someone somewhere in Scotland and they just say surprise me this is probably a good place to bring them. You'll have to wait until later on in the walk to find out what that is. So we're gonna head out, we're gonna do the walk around the woods and then we're gonna end up at this mystery place at the end of the walk. I think it's gonna be a great day, we're gonna have a nice little walk, look for things to find and photograph and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's head out and see what we can find today.
This fairy tale tower dates back to the early 1500s, when it was built by Sir John Elphinstone as the seat of his family, making it over 500 years old. In 1754, Elphinstone was bought by John Murray, the fourth Earl of Dunmore, and the whole estate was renamed Dunmore after his title. The tower continues to be known as Elphinstone Tower, a grand name which adds to its romantic, ruinous appearance. The tower was originally inhabited, but after becoming part of the Dunmore estate, it was converted into a mausoleum for the family, hence the stone shelves in the wall. The Murray family left Dunmore in 1911, and the tower has since decayed. Most of the destruction we see today was the result of a storm in 1968. Surrounded by ancient trees and thickets of brambles, it now appears like something out of a fairy tale. This is one of many things that I love about Scotland, is that you can just sort of stumble upon places like this in the landscape. That's amazing. I did actually know there was a tower on this route. I had seen the name Elphinstone Tower when I was reading about it, but I'd completely forgotten where it was on the path. So that was just a surprise to look up and see the top of the building behind me there. So if I hadn't looked up at the right time, we would have completely missed that. But such a cool place just to stumble on and explore. I love that. It was totally like a fairy tale tower, like something out of an ancient story. I think with all those brambles surrounding it as well, it was like Sleeping Beauty or something. I love the romantic ruins in Scotland and there's always more to explore. So we will definitely find more. of Dunmore is a conservation area, which means that its buildings and appearance are protected. It originally consisted of a few rows of dilapidated houses for local salt pan workers, miners and fishermen, 
The widow of the 6th Earl of Dunmore replaced all the cottages in the late 1800s to provide better conditions for the workers living on her estate. This fountain was installed at the completion of the village in 1879, which must have provided the inhabitants with a much needed fresh water supply. Puppy dog, does someone want snacks? You're not very patient, are you, Jack? Can you see if we can be patient? Wait, 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 gentle. Is that nice? Well done. These dramatic ruins must have once been the stable block for the Dunmore Manor House. I had no idea before coming on this walk that we would encounter so many parts of the old estate. If these were the stables, then you can imagine how the estate house must have been. The family obviously had a lot of wealth and power in their day. On leaving the stable block, we spotted another ruined building with many towering chimneys almost hidden in the woods, so of course we had to explore it.
The once magnificent Dunmore Park House was built in the 1820s. It's hard to picture it now, but this must have been a beautiful and opulent residence. In 1917, the Dunmore estate was broken up and the house and grounds passed to various owners over the years. Until 1971, part of the building was occupied by the gamekeeper of the estate, but eventually it lay empty and neglected. Time, nature and vandalism have had little respect for what was formerly a grand and imposing house. Can you hear, puppy dog? Did you hear something? The house was scheduled to be demolished in the 1980s, but it never took place. Since then there have been many proposals for development into housing or a luxury hotel, but none have come to fruition. Sadly, it may soon be beyond saving, and this grand building consigned to history forever. for them and we've just found a little set of shoe. <laughs> That's life. <laughs> Thank you. 
This bizarre but elegant building might be one of my favourites in Scotland. The 37 foot high stone pineapple sits on top of what would have been a walled garden and summer house for the Dunmore estate. The fourth Earl of Dunmore built this spectacular structure in the 1770s after returning from his post of Governor of Virginia. In Virginia, it was traditional for sailors to set a pineapple on their gateposts to tell the community that they had returned home from a voyage. Perhaps Lord Dunmore wanted to emulate this on the most extravagant scale on his return to Scotland. Pineapples were considered an exotic luxury in the 18th century. Only the very wealthy and well-connected could get their hands on this fruit, so they became symbolic of wealth and high status. By the 1970s, the pineapple was falling into disrepair, so it was purchased by the Earl and Countess of Perth and gifted to the National Trust for Scotland. Well, that's us finished our walk here today and it turned out to have many unexpected twists and turns. I wasn't expecting quite that many ruins and things to explore along the way. I knew it was going to be a nice walk, really interesting, but uh, more than I bargained for. I hope you enjoyed that surprise at the end. It was a big stone pineapple and you can't say much more than that. I just think it's really cool. They had some grand decor choices in the 1700s for sure, so I approve of it. Kind of want a big stone pineapple in my own garden now. Today is the first time where we've not really planned this walk in advance. Usually I know a few days in advance what walk I'm going to do, but I was feeling a little bit indecisive this week and we literally sat down this morning. We have a cup of coffee and we have a cuddle with Jack in the morning and we just had to think about places to go and I've wanted to bring you guys here for a while. The main deciding point actually was Jack Spaniels because he came and sat on the sofa with his pineapple toy in his mouth and that seemed like a good sign. So it definitely worked out well for us. We had a great day and I really hope you enjoyed it too. Now we're all done with the walking, I'm going to head home and have a look at my photos and I will catch you in the studio to start painting. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that I love to paint things that I find in nature. These subjects are definitely within my comfort zone, however, sometimes I like to challenge myself and paint something different. On this occasion, I couldn't resist trying to capture the pineapple building. It's so iconic and was the main focus of this walk, so I wanted to try it. I really struggled with sketching out the building, I just couldn't get the measurements and the composition right. So, for the first time, I decided to transfer a sketch onto the watercolour paper, as my initial sketch had turned out much better than anything I did afterwards.
This is the first time I have genuinely thought that I wouldn't have a finished painting to show you in a video. I've had challenges before, every piece is not plain sailing, but I was really worried about getting this one done in time. The pineapple structure seemed daunting at first, but I just broke it down into individual segments and focused on painting each one separately, as I would with any painting. I actually found the pineapple itself to be easier to paint than the lower part of the building. Maybe this is because I'm more used to painting organic forms than man-made structures with straight lines. I could have made it easier on myself by just focusing in on the pineapple structure itself, but I wanted it to sit in the context of the whole building. Plus, I loved the pink walls and the dark archways of the portico. Like with the Croft Cottage that I painted from the Isle of Skye, this piece didn't really come together until I did the window panes. Now it really starts to look like a building.
this painting took much longer to finish than usual. Normally my paintings take between 10 to 14 hours to finish, but this one took around 18 hours in total. Is it perfect? No. But was it a challenge? Yes. And am I proud of it? Definitely yes. Thank you to everyone who has ordered a 2023 calendar from my Etsy store so far. All of your support means so much to me. Calendars are available to pre-order now and will be sent out in November to arrive before the end of the year. If you would like to support my channel by ordering a calendar or purchasing a print, please head over to my Etsy store. You can also support me by liking, commenting or subscribing, following me on Instagram or by donating the cost of a coffee over on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. You ready, Pops? <laughs> ready to get out for walkies? Being interrupted by a tractor, so I hope you can still hear me. <clears throat> Countryside life. Okay, tractor's nearly gone now, so hopefully you can hear me again. <gasps> Mrs. Goodbye! Good boy, well done. Let's go. Right. <coughs> Very hard to get a picture while you're being knocked by a spaniel. So is, why is that tractor here again? Always being interrupted by a tractor. Obsessed with car source this woman. Obsessed. Jack, come here. Yeah. 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 Yes, well done. You don't stand right in front of the camera. I'm walking away from troubles in my life. I'm walking away.